1000 AD, Cordoba, known as Cortaba, was the largest city on earth. In it were great scholars, technology, science, high culture, philosophy. It was the leader of the world in many different areas. And it is astonishing today for young students to look back at history and to realize the level that Muslim scientists had actually reached. In many history books, we are told that the world went into what is called the Dark Ages. The lights went off somewhere around the 5th century and didn't come back in until around the 15th century with the European Renaissance. The reality was that from the 7th century to the 17th century, Muslims were making profound contributions to science and to all of the different aspects of present-day modern civilization. One study that was done looked at some of the sciences that were originated by Muslims, and they found some astonishing facts. From amongst these sciences were the following. Algebra, which is an Arabic word, jabr, anesthesia, biology, botany, cardiology, cartography, map making, chemistry, dermatology, ecology, embryology, emergency medicine, ethnography, geography, geology, gynecology, horticulture, human physiology, internal medicine, medical ethics, metallurgy, mineralogy, modern science, modern medicine, modern arithmetic, obstetrics, optics, orthopedics, pathology, parasitology, pharmacology, preventive medicine, psychiatry, psychology, public health, pulmonary medicine, sociology, toxicology, trigonometry, urology, veterinary medicine, and zoology. It is astonishing when we go back and, 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 and look at this because we are seeing that the roots of these sciences have been cut off. We also find in a study that was done by historians that Muslims not only developed those science, these sciences, but they also advanced others like acoustics, agronomy, anatomy, astronomy, calculus, electrochemistry, engineering, genetics, geometry, geophysics, meteorology, physics, taxonomy, and zoology. Muslims made profound contributions, and the world at that time uh, could not have advanced if it were not for Muslim scientists taking the knowledge of the world in the spirit of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who had said, lost knowledge is, is, uh, knowledge is the lost property of a believer. Al-Hikmah, Dalat al-Mu'min. In any way he finds it, he is most deserving of it. So in this spirit, the Muslims were able to develop the concept of zero, which is sifar. When you count today in Arabic num numbers, one, two, three, four, five, you're actually counting in the Arabic language. And that is a shock for most people who don't realize the big jump from Roman numerals into this modern mathematical system. Also, the scientific method that we use today and that universities in Western countries cherish so much was developed by the Muslims. The historical method that we recognize as so powerful today in putting together an objective look in history was developed by the Muslims. And people like Ibn Khaldun and his Muqaddama made profound contributions to history and to sociology. And so you look at words like algebra, jabr, alchemy, from alchemia, which goes into chemistry. And, and you'll see literally uh, hundreds of uh, uh, solid subjects and foundations of modern day science. From amongst uh, the amazing achievements of the Muslims were important devices and substances that were introduced 
into the West. There are so many that we don't have time to cover them all. But here are a few. Cotton, paper, these are introduced by Muslims, not necessarily discovered or developed, but they introduced them to the West. Cotton, paper, glass mirrors, street lamps, salt, colored glass, silk, pepper, medicinal herbs, handkerchiefs, deodorant, kerosene, cotton clothing, linen, firearms, cotton balls, postage, postage stamps, book binding, clocks, soap, astrolabes, compasses for navigation, slide rules, flasks, surgical instruments, windmills, artificial teeth, spinning wheels, globes, citrus fruits, melons, carpets, eyeglasses, and the list goes on. We even find things like porcelain, almanacs, encyclopedias, saddles for riding horses, sulfuric acid used in experiments. Th this introduction of culture, this transfer of information and developing of science, this is the basis of the European Renaissance and it is the basis of the modern world that we live in today. If we look at, at history in an objective way, then we see that the torch of civilization did not start in one particular uh, part of the world, but it was shared by people all throughout the planet. In the same way that the ancient Greeks recognized that they got their civilization from ancient Egypt, they got it from the Phoenicians, then we today should also recognize the fact that the comforts that we are living in, that the different uh, aspects of science came to us not through magic, but it came through a transfer of information from Muslims who were living in uh, Andalus, now known as Spain and Portugal, into the rest of Europe. Cities such as Toledo, Seville, Granada, Cordoba, and in Valencia, and you can continue to list the uh, powerful uh, cities of learning, the universities. They were beacons of light in the darkness of Europe at the time. After the fall of the Roman Empire, scientists and people of learning were being tortured by religious uh, people. And so therefore, what, what Islam introduced is a, a, a new relationship with uh, science that a person who believes in one God should actually be more religious than somebody who doesn't believe in God. Because the multiplicity of creation, the beautiful names of creatures, the colors, the, the, the complexity within the universe is only testimony to the presence of a creator of the heavens and the earth. And so the Muslims with this Tawhidic understanding, this unity, bringing together the belief in one God, bringing together the understanding that human beings are all part of one family with respect for knowledge, whether it came from the Arab world or whether it came from Africa, Asia, Europe, they were able to come together and to give uh, Europe and the rest of the world the boost that it needed to come out of the dark ages, to come out of their problems and into the modern world. And so, with this thought, we need to review our understanding of science. We need to appreciate that the Arabic language and Muslims living in Spain and Portugal, known as Al-Andalus, Muslims living in Baghdad in Iraq, living in Cairo in Egypt, living in India, living in Africa, living all over the Muslim world, were literally the torch bearers of civilization. They were the ones who even preserved the philosophies of Aristotle and Socrates. They were the ones who were able to preserve the knowledge of the past and put it in such a form that people could use it in the modern world. It is said that Al-Kashani had a computer in the 15th century. And so the basis of the computer age, binary numbers, the concept of zero, 
this was developed by Muslims and the contributions of Muslims to technology has not ended with the 17th century. Up until today, Muslims are making profound contributions to computer technology, to engineering, to science, and to all aspects of learning. We in the world today need to keep this in our minds. We need to be able to unravel history, to go into those areas called dark areas and pull out the light. If we can do this, then maybe we would be able to appreciate each other more in this tense, confusing world today. We would be able to understand that nothing came about without a relationship with that which came before it. And that everything comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Such was the story of Islam crossing over North Africa and into the straits. Jebel Tariq becomes Gibraltar, the land fair-seeming for the planting of citrus fruits. And some people of language even look to the word Burtaqal. They look to this land of oranges because oranges and citrus fruits introduced into that part of the world were introduced by Muslims. And the citrus fruits were flourishing better than any other crop that they had. So it became a type of Ardul Burtaqal. And so Burtaqal, according to some linguists, becomes Portugal. It is amazing when we go into the roots of terminologies, when we are objective with our history, and when we look at people throughout this planet as part of the same family. This is, these are part of the untold stories of history. This is part of the legacy that came from the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. We hope to look at the relationship of Qurtaba and the achievements made by Muslims to the rest of the world. What happened to Spain? What happened to these great heights? Where did the people go from Andalusia? What happened to the Muslims who had reached such a high level of technology? We hope to be able to unlock other treasure chests and to bring out gems of wisdom that can benefit the younger generation, that can benefit historians, and hopefully can benefit even the people who are ruling this planet. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the last of, pre of prophets and messengers, and he came to unite humanity and as a mercy to all mankind. I leave you with these thoughts in peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.